Question number 12, Dr Megan Woods. Thank you. My question is to the Minister supporting Greater Christchurch Regeneration. Does she agree that the first homes in the East Frame will be completed five months ahead of schedule? Mr Speaker. Oh, the Honourable Nikki Wagner. Uh, yes, and I have been assured by both the Chief Executive of Otakaro and the Chief Executive of Fletcher Living that the first 20 homes in the East Frame will be completed ahead of schedule. Supplementary question. Supplementary question, Dr Megan Woods. How can the first stage be five months ahead of schedule when, according to the original cost-sharing agreement, the first stage should have been completed in 2015, and even the timeline in John Key's announcement of the delayed project should see residents moving in this month and not waiting on a construction deadline a year from now? Mr Speaker. The Honourable Nikki Wagner. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. I think the member is confusing the proposed construction dates with those finalised in the contract. The development agreement with Fletcher's was signed in December 2015, and the completion date for the first homes was October 2018. They will now be completed in May 2018. One supplementary question. Supplementary question, Dr Megan Wood. Is it correct that not only is the first stage a year behind schedule, but that her predecessor admitted last week that the two other lots are expected to be delayed by four months and 12 months and six years after the earthquakes? Isn't it time for government to do, her government to do better? Yes. Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Nikki Wagner. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Yes, I have been advised that the number of homes in the plans of the next two super yachts have, super lots have increased, which means the constructions of those lots will take slightly longer. But we still expect that those 200 homes from these lots will be constructed by the middle of 2019. Supplementary question. How many, supplementary sorry. question, Dr Megan Woods. How many of the 13 Sarah-led anchor projects have been delivered to the date set out in the original cost-sharing agreement? The Hon. Nikki Wagner. Mr Speaker, uh, we are working through the anchor projects. The, the timelines are publicly announced and we will deliver those. Point of order, Mr Speaker. Point of order. That was a very straight question. Order. I asked just, how many order, out of order. 13. Can I just invite the member to ask the question? Thank you, please. Mr Speaker. How many of the 13 Sarah led anchor projects have been delivered to the date set out in the original cost sharing agreement? The Honourable Nikki Wagner. Mr Speaker, what I can tell you is three of the projects, the Oval, the parts of the Avon Otakaro River and also the bus exchange are complete and operating well. And if you would like to put that question in writing, I'll give you the full details. Question. Order. We now, we now come to questions. Order. We now, now come to questions to members. Question, Claire Curran. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Chairperson of the Commerce Committee. Does she intend to call for further submissions on the petition of Dame Fiona Kidman before it is reported back to the House in light of the recently released footage shot inside the drift of the Pike River mine? Melissa Lee. Thank you, Mr Speaker. It is my view that uh, there is nothing in the video footage that changes the risk assessment that uh, a man re-entry deep into the drift is too, too risky. Uh, having said that, the ultimate decision on whether the committee seeks a further submission is a matter for the committee, and the member can actually raise that in committee. Supplementary. In the House, like she is. Supplementary question. Order. Order. Supplementary question, Claire Cowan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the chairperson of the Commerce Select Committee, doesn't the existence of footage showing that people can enter the mine drift safely fundamentally change the case for re-entry, meaning submitters should be allowed the opportunity to provide further submissions and the committee time to consider additional evidence? In order. The Honourable Simon Mr. Bridges. Mr Speaker, this is not a matter of uh, select committee business. It's far wider field what she should be asking as a uh, question to another member. 
and I, I, I'll hear from speaking the to the point of order, Mr. Speaker. Uh, this is exactly what questions to presiding officers should be allowed to do. It holds the uh, presiding officers accountable for the decisions they make. And, Mr Speaker, the supplementary question related directly to the answer the presiding officer of that committee gave to the question. If she had wanted to narrow the scope for supplementary questions, she could have given a narrower answer to the original question as lodged. Order. The order. Order. I think, on balance, the points made by the Honourable Simon Bridges are right. It was a very convoluted question, and certainly not a straightforward one. I am going to invite the member to repeat the question, but before she starts, she wants to be fully conversant with Speaker's ruling 1781, and if I then, after hearing the question again, decide that it is beyond the responsibility of the chairperson of the committee. I won't hesitate to rule the question out. We'll give it one more go. Claire Cohen. Given the answer that the, um, the chair of the select committee just gave to the House on the footage, on her opinion of the footage, doesn't the existence of such footage fundamentally change the case for re-entry, meaning submitters should be allowed to, to, to submit on, the, on a, a parliamentary select committee and further submissions by the committee no. be heard. Well, no, I've listened very carefully again, and that question now certainly goes beyond the responsibility of the chairperson as the chairperson of the committee to answer that question. That concludes questions to members and ministers. I have received a letter.